Pronunciation Pro. Pronunciation Pro. What I'm hearing is you got to switch into the other person's mindset and and really get into their head and see what is it that they're wanting, what are they looking for, what do they care about. And it's easy, especially for our students to get into our own heads. Of, I mean, this is for everyone, but especially our students, I've noticed it's like, am I pronouncing this correctly? Am I, you know, they're really worried about how they're showing up. Um, and am I going to make a mistake? Am I going to be clear enough? I, I, I. And really what's the most helpful is to get into there and say, what do they need? How can I help them? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. now, here's a fishing analogy, if you will. If you've ever spent time fishing, you can look at your array of, of different kinds of baits and you can say, oh, I like this one. I like this one. But the important thing is, what does the fish want? Okay. And it <laughs> yeah. doesn't matter what your favorite color is or whatever that is. It's what yeah. is, what is the fish going to bite? And then you, you put mm -hmm. that on your, on your hook. And so we're doing the same thing with, with, the, with the resume. Um, yeah. You've got to put yourself in their shoes and really, really speak to that job description and do as much research as you can about the position before you apply. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it can be, and I understand there's a lot of fatigue when it comes to job searching. I, I fully understand that, especially if you're like thinking, man, I've got to get a job now. I've got to, I've got to start generating some income, you know, or I'm really mm -hmm. tired of where, I, where I'm currently working and I want to go. So it's going to be very tempting to want to apply to a hundred different jobs. I tell all of my clients, let's not apply to a hundred jobs. Let's pick 10. Mm -hmm. And let's mm -hmm. be very strategic and intentional with 10. If mm -hmm. we shotgun or just send the same resume out to 100 jobs, we probably won't get any responses. If we're intentional with 10, we'll probably get three or four interviews. Um, and that's mm -hmm. a really good, uh, that's amazing if you could set up three or four interviews by being yeah. very intentional. Yeah. Um, there is one thing, I'm going to mention this, and this is very yeah. practical, and this will be very helpful for anybody to understand. We're going to talk about this a little bit more in depth in the master class, but I want to bring this up here. Uh, there is anytime you apply on the internet, which is 95% of jobs now, you're going to be submitting an online application mm -hmm. and you're going to submit your resume as an electronic document, hopefully a PDF um, mm -hmm. to the resume to, to the job. Your resume is most likely eight times out of 10, your resume is going to go through something called an applicant tracking system. The acronym is okay. ATS. And what the ATS is, there's there's different versions. Some of them use artificial intelligence. Some of them are just very simple. But what they're doing is they are comparing your resume to the job description. And they're looking for words and phrases that match. And so if you've ever experienced applying for a job and then you get that auto-generated email that comes to your email inbox and it says, thank you for applying for this job, but your qualifications don't match, blah, blah, blah. Don't take it personally. You got rejected by a computer. Um, and so what we want to do, one of the reasons we have to use verbiage from the job description is we want to get that resume to pass the ATS. And again, putting yourself in the employer's shoes, the employer, if they, if they open a job and they get 300 applicants, nobody wants to read 300 resumes. You wouldn't. I wouldn't. Mm -hmm. So they set the applicant tracking system. Hey, let, let, let the top 20 through, the top 20 matches, and then we'll look yeah. at those. And so by being intentional and strategic, you increase your ability to get through the ATS by like 600%. I mean, just by putting some verbiage oh my gosh. from the job description on your resume. So that's very good. Okay. I feel like that alone is just a piece of insider knowledge that is going to help so many of our listeners and our students just to recognize, oh, hey, this is the process that that's going through. And yeah, if you're very specific about a, a select number of applications, not only are you going to get more interviews, but those interviews are then also great practice, you know, to be able to practice that next level um, and get to that next level. Because if yeah. you're not even getting to that interview part, that's that's becomes a huge problem. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. 
And, and crafting your resume correctly, going through that process can take some work. It's not comfortable, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. but it can make you a much better interviewer. If you, if you will go through the real process of, of crafting a resume, by the end of that mm -hmm. process, you're going to know in your mind, oh my goodness, this is, this is what I bring to the table. These are my skill sets. And now I have, mm -hmm. I have some stories behind and I have an yeah. exercise I'm going to tell everybody to do on the master class. But this exercise really helps you to put a story behind how you got your skills. Um, awesome. And to be able to speak about those in a conversational way. Oh, I'm excited about that. That'll be really interesting to dive in and do that work. Um, okay, so let's shift gears now to the job interview process. Um, what advice, what little nuggets here do you have for our audience to best prepare for interviews as a non-native English speaker? And, you know, what are those employers looking for? Yeah. Oh my goodness. So I'll answer your last question first. What are employers mm -hmm. looking for? Think about yourself as an employer. Who do you want to hire? Well, you're going to hire somebody that you like. <laughs> it's that, that's <laughs> the, the bottom line. So you can have two people that are equally qualified. Mm -hmm. Their resumes are relatively similar, but you bring them into an interview and one of them you just like better. You're probably gonna hire the person you like. So it's like, okay, what, what makes somebody likable? Um, I believe that likable people are people who are comfortable. Comfortable people are confident people. And confident people are people that have done the preparation first. So preparation creates confidence. Confidence creates comfort. And comfort allows you to just be yourself. Mm -hmm. And so think about this. Uh, if I were to ask any of you a question that you have never articulated an answer to, the very first time you give that answer, it's going to be kind of choppy. And it's, you're going to mm -hmm. be thinking as you're explaining it, and it's not going to be very solid. We wait five minutes, and then I ask you the exact same question. The second time you articulate that answer is going to be night and day different. It's going to be completely mm -hmm. different. And so what I have all of my clients do is practice, practice, practice listening to themselves. Now, yeah. if they're with you, Annie, and going through the coaching that you have at Pronunciation Pro, they're probably used to trying to do that. So mm -hmm. in an interview, this happens almost every time to everybody. It's happened to me. It's probably happened to you. I don't know if you've ever had this experience, but you're sitting there and you want the employer to like you, you know, so, and they ask you a question that you've never really thought about before. You've never had to answer it. Well, you're afraid of silence. So your mouth starts moving, but you don't know the answer. So your brain is thinking of the answer as your mouth is moving. Then your answer comes after about 20 or 30 seconds. Then you start giving the answer, but then you have a hard time stopping. So you repeat yourself and then you do maybe the worst thing you could do is you apologize for yourself. And then mm. by the time the answer is over, you've been speaking for eight minutes and you just feel terrible and then you're not comfortable and just the whole thing is just a disaster. But if that employer asked you the exact same question a few minutes later, your answer would be way better. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is get that all out of the way before the interview. So while you're driving in your car, if you're just by yourself, um, and I can give a whole list of interview questions that you can practice mm -hmm. with. It's possible to know what an employer is actually going to ask. Um, but you have got to get used to articulating your resume verbally in short, concise statements that are really, comp uh, that are really confident. The more you do that, by the time you get into your interview, if you have already articulated the answer, then you can pay attention to your body language. You can pay attention to their, you can read their interactions and how mm -hmm. they're responding to you instead of wondering what to say. You're, you're focused mm -hmm. on how you're saying that. So mm -hmm. that's very practical advice there. Pronunciation. 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 Pronunciation.